Well, today is Saturday, June 20th, 2015, and the postman has delivered yet another package to my door. What is it, you might say? This is an Acer 5166SX desktop computer. At least what's left of it. Purchased this on eBay. The guy wanted $116 for it. I offered him $35 and he took it. These Acer computers are extremely hard to find and I've been looking for one for a few years now and I finally found one even though the front of this case is clearly missing at least half of it up here the cover for the CD-ROM is also missing and uh, I think there's a door that went over this here too uh, the case actually is in relatively good shape there's very few scuffs and scratches on this. You can still see it retains its original design for Microsoft Windows 95 logo down there. I don't know if this is an original Acer part number sticker or not. It does look like it is. And it still has its little feet on it too, which is pretty cool. Purple feet as I might add. See that nice little punch out down there for venting. It's kind of cool. Take a look at the back of this thing as I move it with my foot. See again the back plastic here is in excellent condition. This does have an add-on video card, an ethernet card. Actually that's a coaxial ethernet, also known as ArcNet. Old card. I don't have anything to use that with unfortunately anymore. And that does look to me like the original uh, Acer installed sound card, looking at that little blue sticker around the line out there. So I'll have a closer look at this. I'm going to throw it up on the bench there and put some power to it. They did say it posted. There is no hard drive in this, so we'll see if that's actually true or not. They did include a brand new power cable too, which I didn't need, but I'll take it. It's nice little color-coded labels there to tell you which port is where. And I probably have said this before in a previous video, but those labels right there remind me an awful lot of Windows 8 tiles. I think it's kind of funny how we've kind of gone back in time when it comes to stuff like that. But yeah, this thing is, other than the front being broken, um, I'd say this thing is in relatively excellent condition. There's a little bit of a sc scrape here. Just a little scuff there, but I think that might just might just wash out. I don't know. We'll see. Of course, I've got stickers to take off here. But, yeah. <clears throat> so, why would I get something like this? Well, besides the fact that apparently this Acer computer is next to made... Well, I should say made of next to unobtainium anyway. Um, I actually have been looking for one of these for a long time, and it's because this is the first computer that I ever actually used in the store that got me hooked on computers. So I think that might have been a Pentium 90 version, and it was a black version, not this two-tone gray thing here. Um, sad thing is, is I actually did have one and had it about five years ago ended up giving it away it was in perfect shape didn't have a keyboard or mouse or monitor it was an all a solid black one It was a penny 166 just like this one and I ended up giving it away to a guy that comes by the store once in a while and wants to buy things from me I asked him a couple months ago if he still had it and he said no so, the reason I got rid of it was because it's not a standard ATX case, nor is it an AT. So, at the time, I just wanted it for the case, and I was going to put a modern motherboard in it. But over the years, especially since doing this channel, I've kind of grown more accustomed to leaving these things stock. And given the fact that these things are so rare, especially this Acer anyway, as to what I'm referring to... Um, I wanted to do a video on one of these, but I just couldn't find one. At least one that I was wanting to pay the money for. There was a guy on eBay 
some time ago that had one of these for about 150 bucks, 130 bucks, something like that, and he had no best offer on it. So I just kind of passed that one up. It's not there anymore either. So I don't know if he sold it or if he just kind of gave up trying to sell it. This one looks like uh, they went through it about a year ago. So this is the first time I'd seen it come up on eBay. Of course, eBay search, when you search for Acer on eBay, it's kind of scary the results that come up because it's a lot of so uh, sorting through garbage that you're not really actually wanting to find. So uh, anyway, let's go ahead and pop this thing open. I'm going to go put it on the bench here. And uh, we'll see if this thing's got any kind of uh, life left to it. Hopefully it does. The uh, floppy drive, before I go any further, I do have the cover for it. And it is right here. Uh, it was in there. The top metal here, cover, cap, whatever you want to call it that goes on the top of these floppy drives, was bent in. And when I bent it back out, this thing just kind of fell out of it, so I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, it's a unique floppy drive, so I don't know if I would be able to replace this easily if I had to. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to have to use it the way it is, because I obviously don't have any spare parts for it. I'm going to be keeping my eye out, though, for at least another front cover. I haven't found one yet, but uh, hopefully I'll either find the cover or just an entire second system, and maybe this one will become parts or combine the two or something like that, but... Anyway, that's the goal, the goal, the plan, whatever you want to call it right now. So, I think it's time to go ahead and test this bad boy. Well, it took me a little bit of time to figure out how to get that case apart. As it turns out, it just slides off, apparently. There's nothing that seems to hold it on. Nothing that I can see that's actually broken off that would have hold it, held it on. Needless to say, it was just pressure that apparently holds that on, which probably explains why the front is broken, because someone probably tried to slide that case off and ended up breaking the front cover in the, while they were attempting to do that. So, yeah. It's actually, uh, I think it's done pretty well for its age, uh, nearly 20 years old now. Uh, it's pretty clean. I mean, there is dust in it, obviously. But, I've seen remarkably worse, frankly, on computers much, much, much newer than this one. You can see the Intel Pentium 166 back there. This has a Matrox Millennium card. It says mil slash 2M on it. I'm not sure if that means it's a Millennium 2 or what. Um... I'm going to guess that it looks like the original card to the system, but that's a pure guess at this point. I'll have to look up the part number and see. The sound card is interesting. It has a Viber 16S in it. At least that's what it says on the chip there. So I've never had one of those. That should be interesting to see how that sounds. That looks to me like it's original to the system as well. I don't know what this card is for absolutely certain. It appears to be a parallel port, although I don't understand why there would have been a second one installed in the system, since the motherboard has one already on it, so I don't know about that. The 3Com Etherlink 3 card that's installed in here, of course it's only the coaxial style, and uh, I don't honestly know what the term is for that particular plug, that's a little bit before my time. But I did have an ARCnet network, and I did have the cables and the hub for that years and years and years ago. Of course, those have been long since thrown away. It's too bad, too, because I actually would like to show that working. Uh, one megabit was all I ever got out of it. I don't know if it was capable of any more than that. Uh, it's a really nice motherboard in this thing. I'm going to do a video a little bit later on once I get this system... Uh, at least restored to functionality status anyway. Um, but for now, I'm just going to go over a couple of the points that I see. Um, it does have onboard video, so I don't know, without taking this uh, riser card off the motherboard, I can't see what chipset that was at the moment. Probably an S3 of some sort. This motherboard does appear to be an, an Acer-designed motherboard, which is pretty neat. 
Uh, it does have the ALI chipset on it. And of course I can't really see it, but it is back there. And I'll probably do a video on that as well. Or include that in the video, I should say. I'll take the riser card off. I'll give the system a good thorough cleaning and things like that. And while I'm doing that, I'll take a good shot of the motherboard. I don't know what form factor they would have called this. This is a fairly typical form factor to see in OEM computers in general. I would call it the uh, junk, junk proprietary OEM board. Uh, you see this a lot in gateways, not gateways, um, Packard Bell HP Compacts. Just to name a few that use this particular style of board where you have to have a riser card. And the board can be used in either a desktop or a, a laptop, or laptop, desktop, mid tower, or. Sad thing is that both of them are desktop. So, <laughs> desktop or mid tower, we'll just leave it at that because I think that's the technical term they used to use back then. Um, <clears throat> have to see what type of memory this is. This looks like the same type of memory that's in my ALR46 system that I do mean to do a video about. That will be coming up shortly. This one, however, will be in front of that one because I'm a little bit excited to fire this baby up. It does have... Um, <clears throat> I'm guessing this is for video memory. They look like video memory sockets to me. I'll have to see. This looks to me like the cache sticks, or cache sticks, cache chips on here. This looks, it does say socket 7 on it. So and there's a volt rig right there. It does list jumper settings for K5. It says M1 on there as well, so I'm betting that's the Cyrix M1. 686 M1. So yeah, just thought I'd give a quick shot of the inside of this. Uh, this is something I, I really have come to grow more appreciation for over the years. Is um, These older systems that the company actually designed the motherboard and some of the components that went into the case as opposed to just designing a case and throwing an Intel OEM board at it with a BIOS that's had the company, the OEM logo applied to the BIOS there. It's pretty nice. But uh, yeah, it's in uh, really pretty much, I would say, flawless condition. And take a look at that fan right there. I suppose that could have been blown out, but it spins good. It's really not clogged up at all. Almost looks like a fan for a 486, so it's kind of small, but it'll do. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, let's go ahead and fire this baby up and see if it comes to life. Alright, power is plugged into it. Nothing went boom so far. It does have a slight whiff of old basement to it. That's okay. It'll, that'll uh, eventually clear itself out. So let's go ahead here and push what I believe to be the power button here. Yep. Oh, and we do have life. It's definitely taking a while to count up that memory. Supposedly this has 64 mega RAM in it, we'll see. Ah, 32 mega RAM. So I wonder if that means one of the sticks is dislodged slightly, because the sticker on the case says 64 meg. Do you see something interesting there? It says external cache none. So I wonder if those are cache slots. Cache uh, sockets up there. Hmm. Yeah, at least it does boot up though. It looks like an AMI BIOS to me. Slightly modified, of course. 
384k of shadow ram that's kind of interesting so let's go ahead and reboot this and see if we can get into the BIOS. Maybe the external cache is just disabled, but I'm kind of guessing no. Enter setup control, alt, escape. Yeah, okay, three finger salute. Basic configuration. Wow. The date is actually right, and so is the time. Absolutely unbelievable. Wow. That's a heck of a good battery in this thing. External cache is enabled. So clearly those uh, sockets that I saw up there must be for cache. I've never seen something like that on a motherboard, so that's going to take a little bit of investigating to figure out exactly what chips go into those sockets. Nothing really remarkable to see in here. Of course, my monitor alignment is off a little bit, so... Yeah, at least it does work though. So that's a good Matrox Power Graphics Accelerator. So I think that'll end this video. And uh, I guess if uh, anybody watching this has an idea what the uh, cache memory is called that would be installed in that, it's not obviously a Coast module, clearly. Um, yeah, maybe you can post it down in the comments below. But uh, I might do some research on that and see if I can figure out what that's called because I definitely want to get cache memory in this thing. I It's hard to say whether or not that cache memory was actually pulled out of the system at some point or if the system just didn't come with it. The other thing, too, is that there is an empty socket down in here as well. And I don't know if that is the tag for the cache or not. I'm kind of guessing probably so. But, uh, yeah. Well, cool. Uh, yeah, so this should be an interesting restoration project at some point, if I can find all the parts for it. Hey, the CD-ROM opens. That makes a funny sound. Listen to that. Hear that? That wee wee. All right. Take care, everyone. Peace out. Boy, that fan is awfully quiet. So is the one in the power supply. Thing I've noticed is <laughs> why I'm shooting this to put at the end of this video is <laughs> this voltage regulator is getting awfully hot. I'm going to have to check the jumper settings on this motherboard to make sure that uh, the correct voltages and the correct processor type is set on this thing. I guess I should be kind of curious to find out if that's actually an Intel processor behind that heat sink. Well, how's about this? As an addendum to this video, at the end of it here, I'm going to pop that heat sink off because I'm kind of curious if that's an actual Intel processor because the BIOS doesn't actually say, so give me a minute here and I'm going to pop that uh, heat sink off there and find out what's under that heat sink. Alright, I've loosened the clip here, so let's see if we can get this off of here. There we go. Moment of truth, what is under this heat sink? It is an Intel Pentium. Hmm. Guess I shouldn't be shocked, but... I kind of expected maybe an AMD under there being an Acer. Hmm. Well, I already have one of those Intel Pentiums and that's what it was sold as, so that doesn't really, I don't really care one way or the other on that, but that's what's under that heatsink. It is a genuine Intel Pentium processor. Copyright 9293.